Looks good. We are streaming at livestream.com. I'm Dana Turnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. And you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations throughout the entire internet. Currently, that wasn't supposed to happen. How did I end up on that button today, I wonder? That'll teach me. I'm Dana Durnford, nuclearproctologist.org. And you can find my videos uh, seven days a week so far at livestream.com, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time. Go to livestream.com, type in Dana Durnford, and you'll see my picture. Can't get any easier than that if you wanted it to. And you just come over to the external. We got to kill... We gotta kill the Adobe and let's quick say hi to everybody. I seen Shani Ken, Elaine uh, was first up this morning. Good morning, Elaine. Hi, Doke. Hi, George. And Kate. Hi, Kate. And Divine Wright. Hi, Deb. Rattle Shark. Amthurst. Another dip. That's awesome. Daniel. David. Hey, bud. And everybody I probably missed. Today's stream is about Unit 4. Hi, Terry Ann. Everybody. Looks good. Looks good. It takes us a few minutes to make sure the stream is really good before we kick it into second, third, and fourth gear. And so, the stream is looking good, looking solid. We're still trying to raise, uh, we got $850 raised towards the talk show. Uh, reached $300 million a month. Uh, what this does, before we start to stream here, is it allows you to, I'll come back to me here, but generally what that allows you to do is start doing interviews professionally. And I can use the whole bandwidth for audio for like when I'm not streaming for doing interviews. I have just unbelievable audio. But it'll correct the pictures, it'll correct the noise in the video, it'll correct the frame rates, it'll correct the audio, it'll kind of Adobe the audio. It's there's another name for it, but no, they actually do use Adobe in that, if I remember correctly. And so uh, you can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org with credit cards or paypal.com uh, type in Dana D-A-N-A -A, like you see below Durnford one word at hotmail.com and you can donate there and we are constantly pushing for the talk show I'll come back to that talk show for one second and so talk show once again I'll be pushing that every day la 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 Hi, ice cream, you scream, ice cream for you, Ryder, George. And uh, Nova, David, again, everybody, Albert. Sounds good. Okay, here we go then. Divine got no sound. You got to refresh your page. And, and refresh your page, Divine. <laughs> I tried. Okay, here we go. Let's get it moving. <coughs> so, today we're going to cover Unit 4 at Japan. But the first uh, set of pictures that we're going to uh, show everybody, and these pictures will expand and get bigger, and they'll get smaller, blah, blah, blah. The whole screen will fill up. I'll have to adjust it as we're doing this uh, because all the pictures are not the exact same sizes. And I don't know how to use the software properly to configure everything to come out to the one side. And I should be able to work that out around 2035 or something with a little bit of luck. So let's boogie. A boogie woogie. Boogie woogie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so here's the tsunami coming in. Now that's the first wave. That's breaching the walls. That's tearing the wall down, the first wave. Okay, so 
These pictures were taken from the rooftop, obviously, from the stairwells and places like that you'll see coming up here. This is the Fukushima Daiichi uh, Military Industrial Complex's Directed Energy Weapons Production Facility. <laughs> so let's keep rolling. There's not very many pictures. We'll, we'll cruise through it. You can see the tsunami. The water's got went out and then it's starting to come in. This kind of stuff is going to happen. Um, some of these are going to be a little bit blurry. It's the water receding. Water receding. Water receding. That's low, low, super low, beyond low tide, rather. Okay. Um, so there's one of the barriers they got for their little port. That's the same port that keeps the radiation in. <laughs> That's a good one. But anyway, here comes the tsunami. So generally what happens with the tsunami is a wave comes in, next wave comes in and slides across on top of it, the next wave comes in on top of that, the next wave comes in on top of that, the next wave is coming in on top of that. Now when they're coming in, the big wave starts coming in, they're coming in at around 600 miles per hour before they hit the shallow water. They start slowing down at shallow water. <coughs> Okay, we have got another 15 of those pictures to get through. And you probably haven't seen these pictures, most likely the majority of you in the near future who's watching this. Uh, the only time you'll see these pictures basically is if I show them to you. Okay, and so here comes the tsunami. It's already, as you can see in the lower right hand side of the picture, and in the lower bottom left of the picture, you can see the water is through the plant. You can see the other waves now are coming in. They're breaking as they're picking up speed and, and rising up. And so these pictures might not be in order, by the way. Send your hate mail to Dana Durnford at hotmail.com. Um, that's me joking, by the way. Okay, so here comes the tsunami. It's already engulfed the plant. Now, now it's... Now, uh, the best way to look at it, right? Like I said, they come in, one on top of the other one. Next wave comes in on top of that one. And so now this starts going through the whole country, through hundreds and hundreds of miles of the coastline. It's not just Diachi. The tsunami didn't just come in and hit Diachi. We'll cover that in a bit. And let's keep going. We'll go back to that picture, bring it up full screen for you. So you can really take in what I'm talking about. So today is about Unit 4. But I thought I'd treat everybody to these pictures and make sure everybody's on the right pages. And also, you know, here's some documentation you might never have seen and you probably would have never seen anywhere else. And that's just, I'm not, I, that's a conjecture, but I'm pretty sure I'm right by saying that. So the tsunami is relentless and these pictures were taken in quick succession. Once again, I'm not sure how close they are to being in the right order. That's okay. It's a, it's about showing you some context, giving you a kind uh, giving you a visual. Uh, this is after the tsunami is starting to recede. That picture, and uh, you can see the site is engulfed in water. It's running back out. So you can see it's running back out because you can see how far down it's got to drop to get back out of there. But it rose up in that plant uh, around forty five feet. This is the water receding. And so this took a long time for the water receding. Um, you can see there's no way you can drive a truck. And I'll show you more of that coming up here. But you can see how everything, look at the guys on the roof, TEPCO employees. That's the last time you'll see any TEPCO employees. The rest are homeless and people who don't speak the language and uh, day workers and stuff like that. So uh, take a good look because that's TEPCO employees. Okay, so unit four. Have I still got the chummy on? Hang on. Let me fix that. My apologies. So some of those pictures would have looked a lot better if I hadn't have done that. Let's run right back for one second and so you can get the actual We'll just stagger through the pictures right quick. I'll have to do a better job next time. 
So it starts to give you some more context if I didn't have to fade on it, right? So let's keep going. Unit 4. All the spent fuel. This is TEPCO. This is TEPCO's website. This is TEPCO's official picture. This is TEPCO's. Everything I'm showing you is the official picture, the official documentaries, or documentation, the official. Everything I show you. Bar nothing. For a couple of years. Is all official. I'm not making anything up. I'm not taking anything out of context that I know about. Okay. Woohoo. Okay, so TEPCO announced. Where's the date on that? No date on that. Some of the last nuclear fuel rod assemblies to be removed from the teetering fuel pool above the number four reactor are winched out. So they're telling you they're winching it out of the number spent number four spent fuel pool. Is there any doubt to what I'm saying there? Does anybody have an issue with that? Can everybody wrap their mind around that? So you can see once again how they put those pictures out there. Reactor 4 avoided a core meltdown when the tsunami spawned by the March 11th, 2011 earthquake. That's the last paragraph ripped through the number one plant. Okay. But the buildings were torn apart by a hydrogen explosion just days later. The over 1,500 fuel rod assemblies that continue to be stored at the top, at the top, that's the second last paragraph, the second bottom sentence, of the devastated structure has remained a major source of concern in Japan and overseas. So the top. Okay, so the top of that building is where it was. They didn't say bottom of the building. They didn't say the middle of the building. They said the top of the building. The top. The top. So World Nuclear News come out and told you that same story. Now the picture you see on your left over there, the furthest one away, is the picture I added in. And then the headline is their, their picture. So we're just going to run through that to show you the enormity of the lie and some other headlines at the same time. Senior advisor resigned, said Japan government sent public safe radiation limits 20 times too high. <coughs> well, 20 times too high is a death sentence when it comes to radiation. 20 times too high is, is like if I say that if you fall from 10 feet and you'll break your arm or you'll break your leg after, say if you went to 11 feet. But say at 10 feet, you might get away with it. But you still might break it. But at 11 feet, not 20 times higher, but at 11 feet, you're going to break your leg or your arm. Because that's a scientific fact. Don't forget to chop that out and forget everything else I say and try to find a way to wiggle around that one to the nuclear PR firms that are monitoring me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, according to the court documents we got. Let's keep going. Okay, so now when TEPCO told that story, everybody ran out and repeated the story. So the BBC come out and showed you that picture. That's the official picture, but on the right-hand side of it are the official pictures too, of the detonations, not necessarily number four, but that's the number four reactor and the fuel pool was at the top. Was at the top. Was at the top. Look at the second last, se uh, the last paragraph and the second sentence from the bottom. Irregular inspection, all this fuel was stored in the pool on the upper levels of the building. But these are t at the top and upper levels. Once again, they're, they're not saying, they're not mixing those words up. They're saying it at the top and then, then it's at the upper level. But if you look at the design, they're right at the very roof in those, in those Mach 1 uh, reactors. Okay, so the BBC come out and told you the same story. But yet, look at the building alongside of it that I put there. Uh, comparison with x-rays and CAT scans are meaningless. So when they tell you it's like a CAT scan or an x-ray, it's actually meaningless. And that inhaling particles of radiation exposure by a factor of a trillion. Better get my ass in gear here. We got a lot to get through. TEPCO begins critical work on loading Fukushima Daiichi. This is informidable. Look at the picture they showed you. But look at the actual picture of the fuel pool, the original. These are all official pictures. 
to the right hand side. How come they don't match up, I wonder? Do you think maybe that you got hoaxed about Unit 4? That the whole world hoaxed you about taking the field at a number 4? Pay attention and watch the rest of the video and get yourself a little education and be able to talk with your friends and your families and your loved ones and your co-workers about the details, the minutiae. Fukushima nuclear plume covered most of North America on March the 19th, that's eight days after the accident, over the North Atlantic, the Caribbean, and Canada's east coast, the Atlantic Ocean. Removal of fuel rods began at Fukushima Daiichi. That's November 19, 2013. That's CBC Canada's biggest media telling you the building alongside of it. See the, the pictures I put there, the detonation and the destroyed reactor building number four. But look at the picture that CBC told Canadians. Right, and CBC is the same one that puts Woods Hole and University of Victoria up on a pedestal without no other narrative all the time. And they also put up that picture with no other narrative. I put those pictures alongside of it to show you the ludicrous of their statement. The fuel pools are up the roof where that red uh, hose is going to. Zoe, no, right here, Zoe, 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 hang on, folks. Hang on, stay, stay, Zoe. No, you stay, 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 stay. Good girl, Zoe. Hang on. Stay there. You stay right there. I got you. Hang on, buddy. Come here. Careful. You okay? Okay. Get going. Yeah, I bet you were happy to get into that. Holy crap, holy! Dean up. <laughs> she, she was in all the wires, man. She was about to rip everything apart that time. Oh, that would have been a disaster. <coughs> I don't know if I can get everything to work again if it ever stops. <coughs> it took us 20 days to get this far. No, you don't. You're not going back in there. You lie down right there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You lie down right there, retard. No offenses to uh, Woods Hall or Uvic for that statement. <laughs> so here's CBC telling you the removal of fuel rods. But look at the billing. Alongside of it that I put there. Are you starting to get what they done to you now about Unit 4? These are Unit 4 pictures. Here's another headline for you. Radioactive releases may continue for a year or even more after fission has stopped. What date was that? March the 14th, 2011, three days after the accident. So three days after the accident. You know why he said that to you? Because the buildings... I just come up and say hi for a quick second. Hi, Adam. Kate. Shanikin. David. I scream, you scream, Albert. Just come over and keep a quick eye on and say hi to everybody once in a while. So look at the building alongside of it. You see the fuel pool? See it up in the corner? Right, they tore all the top of the building all the way down to the bottom. Destruction you see there, off. Right, but look at the picture. On RT, look what RT is showing you, this beautiful symmetrical building. But look at the real building alongside of it. Who are you going to believe, your own eyes or the lying people, the people that told you that it didn't look like that, that it looks... Top official, second meltdown likely underway at a second nuclear reactor, March the 12th. The day after the second meltdown, of course. But here's... a. Uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company, look at the two pictures they show you. Fuel removal from Unit 4 at Fukushima Daiichi. You can see Unit 4 in the bottom, and you just seen other pictures, I'm going to show you more. You can see these places detonated, but look what they show you. Beautiful buildings, all kinds of, everything is polished, Molly Maid was in there, they got people inside of it. Nobody can get inside the building. So, but that was the fable they, they rolled out to uh, trick you. Officials presuming that two nuclear reactors have now had meltdowns, March the 13th. Here you go, motherboard showing you perfect building on your left-hand side. And look at the two pictures I put there for you. These are all official pictures, and I'm showing everybody. Everything is official. So all the rods are actually gone. But let's keep going through the headlines. Nuclear official confirms explosion at number three. Number three was right alongside of number four. Fukushima plant readies for delicate fuel removal. That's physics.org. Why would you ever go back to that site? Why should you ever trust them again? Look what they showed you. 
and they never questioned it. None of them questioned the picture. Everybody didn't bother showing you the pictures on the right. I put those there for you. Because the fuel pulls are at the top of it, like TEPCO told you. Japan crew facing 100 year battles. Well, they wouldn't be facing 100 year battles if it looked like the picture on the left. But they definitely faced a 100 year battle if it looks like the picture on the right. But yet, they're both the official pictures. TEPCO begins emptying Fukushima Diachi for spent fuel pull. <coughs> It's November 19, but look at the fuel pool alongside it and look at the bottom picture at the top of the building. Right? Can you wrap your mind around what I'm saying to you? And, and what can you do about it? What you can do about it is you can hold them accountable. You can call up any of these medias. Call them up on the telephone. Call them up on the telephone. Write letter after letter after letter to them until they answer you and ask them why didn't they show you the billing in context of the fake picture. Ask them why didn't they ask a simple question like how is that possible? Ask them why didn't they mention that it was an enormous amount of work to try to do something like that, that it would take a hundred years according to the media like I just showed you. But the tip go, no, no, we'll just take a picture, say it's inside the reactor because the media won't question us. The media will say whatever we want them to and then we'll just roll it out and pretend that we've done something. Meanwhile, give us another $60 billion. Well, because everybody's going to find out at some point you won't give us no more money, so we need it now. What about the people you're poisoning? Well, yeah, what about them? Who cares? Don't drink the rainwater, says the state of Virginia. Well, that's because the jet streams are real. Jet streams are actually real. I know that's a shock. I, I know that people are like, Dana, now you kind of, now, like, I was following you all the way up to the jet stream, Dana, but if you're going to say the jet streams are real, I don't know why I should trust you anymore, Dana. Well, I looked it up. You should tell. You'll find out the jet streams are real. I know. Crazy. Let's keep going. Here comes Seth Dorn from CBS and uh, PBS. And Seth Dorn is a nuclear PR firm's wet dream. He's the worst lapdog imaginable. Look at the picture behind Seth. He's inside of Unit 4, he said. But here's Unit 4 all around him. The pictures I put there for you. They can't clean that up. They can't get in there. They can't get into Chernobyl. They can't get in any of the other reactors. And they never got in there. And so that he's not there. That's a green screen or something, but he's not there. He's not at Fukushima, I can guarantee you. Uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction right alongside of it in Unit 1, March the 30th. But here's Sid. Look at the building above him, and look at the building he's in. And then look at the original pictures of the fuel pole by the drones. We don't even know if we can trust him on that one. Independent French Radiation Commission wants Europe warns Europe that health risk from Fukushima fallout is is um, extraordinary. It's a better way to put it. Okay, so here you got CBC, RT, Physics.org, you got Motherboard, World Nuclear News, you got all kinds of mainstream media came out and showed you those pictures, but yet the reactors looked like the buildings I got alongside of it. But you look at a little picture that I got under headlines. I superimposed all that for you so you would understand it, what, how big the lie was. How can you have that beautiful building up in the top left-hand corner when the building detonated and the building alongside of it, we have 5,000 pictures of the reactors. And so the pe most people don't have 5,000 pictures of those reactors. Right? Send your hate mail to Dana Dern for it at uh, hotmail.com. Now, in comparison, Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Fukushima never stopped. Chernobyl was one-third the size and a 30% meltdown. But Fukushima has four full meltdowns. It never stopped in, in Fukushima, but in Chernobyl, it did after 10 days. Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. Fukushima is more bombs than we've created by about 1,000 that we have sitting in storage. Fukushima is unhinged. It's in a chain reaction. It's consuming everything around it, all noise and radiating it. It's adding electrons to the atoms. 
it has a new atomic weight. A million dead in Chernobyl. Kofi Annan said 3.4 uh, 3 million children got permanent disabilities in 2000 at the United Nation in Ukraine. 3 million children, permanent disabilities, a million dead. Fukushima, none died. But he had his four full meltdowns, not one third meltdown. It didn't stop after 10 days, etc., etc. Chernobyl, he abandoned all those villages and homes and, and they plowed them down. In Fukushima, the maniacal, demented retards, excuse the language, it's sometimes I, I use the wrong language, I know. Uh, psychopaths in Fukushima, free home if you're pregnant. Can you get any more, any more twisted than that? Can you be any more wrong as a human species than doing that? Can you be any more disgusting and low and, and demented by doing that? No. Are these people that are doing that to the, the victims or who are already victims, sending them back in there, do they got any kind of moral high ground? Did, did, were they hired to do that to you? Were they hired to send you back into danger? That's what you got to ask yourself. Was you, Vic, in Woods Hole, were they, are, are they hired to send you back into danger? Yes. Are they hired to hide the danger? Yes. Are they hired to lie to you in every sentence they say? Yes. Are they hired because they are emotionless, soulless, uh, demented people? Yes. And is their job to teach your children or to be used as a tool when something happens to industry? It's not to teach your children. It's to corrupt your children. It's to fill your children with nonsense and propaganda. It's to uneducate your children. It's to take away the hope of your children. That's what these uh, types of professors and institutions are doing. They bring nothing to the board, only evil. They bring nothing to the board. And that they have all the other professors in those institutions are monitoring me to report to the police if I say something they don't like. Because they fear me. Because they don't want their families to watch what I'm saying because it will resonate in their family. Their family will finally understand why their parents are not like a normal parents why they don't have emotions like a normal parent or friend's parents have why they don't do the same things that why they don't why they consider themselves better than everybody else let's keep going with the unit four fable oh. so these are all official pictures you should make up your own mind cecium and iodine but there's a hundred times more uh, strontium 90 and that there's um, 31 times more iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. But regardless of, of all of that, that meant you should never, ever, ever, ever drink the milk in Hawaii. Again. If that was just a single release, like Chernobyl was 10 days, you still can't drink the milk or eat the meat in the UK, in Ireland, in Scotland. And that you can't sell the land in UK, in Ireland and Scotland that was contaminated from Chernobyl. And that they just opened, you know, they're doing it. They're slowly starting to, to get it out into the market, even though they should, they should never sell that for a billion years. Because it was an iodine and cesium that everybody should have been worried about. It was the curium, plutonium, americium, the neptunium, the, stranti or the uranium. And everything comes from uranium. Everything is a byproduct of uranium after it went through a chain reaction. Unit 4. Okay. Can you work your mind out? Look at the building. These are both official pictures. There's no modifications done outside. They tore all the top of the building off. The one on your right. But yet they claim the one on your left is what it looks like inside of what's left. This is Unit 4. This is the most important story on the planet because of all the headlines I showed you earlier, we got the media lying to you. We got the media covering it up. We got the media manipulating you. We got the media in you know, outright outrageous deception. We got the media with nowhere to turn, nowhere to run. They got media with no one to blame on it themselves. They could have come out and said, hey, wait a second. Like, look what Dana done. Dana was right. Dana, look, Dana showed you a picture. Now, you know, 
Too bad our producers didn't do that. We 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 missed that. We should have come out and done what Dana done and showed you a picture and let you make up your own mind. Instead, what we done was we come out and told you what to think, told you how to act, told you to go out and demonize anybody who said anything different, told you to go out and tell people's like a banana. So they used you to bludgeon yourself. Wrap your mind around that one. Because <laughs> that is what happened. These are official pictures. My part about that is you can't wrap your mind around. But you're just going to say, oh, well, that's okay. If you, if you, if you say that, you're, it's because you've been conditioned to say that. It's because you're not able to think for yourself. And that offends you because you're told you can, but you can't. Because you can't look at those two pictures and tell the difference. You can't look at those two pictures and make up your own mind. You can't look at those two pictures and make a rational decision. Why don't you show it, why don't you show it to your five and six year old kids? I mean, they'll tell you the difference. Why don't you bring it into a public school and show it to all the students in the auditorium and ask them, does that match up? And write an essay on why they think the way they think. That's what Uvic and Woods Hole should do every time they're talking to the students. Instead of lying to them, they should say, here are these two pictures. Can you tell the difference? I can't tell the difference. Japan officials says delay in raising Fukushima level 7 was because they had all the media to come out and lie for them. Why would they? Like I showed you earlier. Triggered a panic reaction. Yeah. Well, it's better than the reaction that's coming because they're going to want to hang you. Where it's legal. It's legal. It's legal to hang them in Japan. It's legal. Don't get me arrested for saying it. I don't mean it. I'm talking about Japan where it's legal. I'm allowed to say it. Because it's legal in the Japan to hang them. And we should change the laws in Canada so we can go after all the lawyers here and hang them too. It's legal for me to say it that way. And I've done that in 500 videos probably. And he found two sentences where they use it to get a warrant to arrest me. And now they got themselves into a little box they can't get out of. Now their whole world is crumbling around them. Now they got no one they can turn to. Now they got no one they can trust because everybody knows that they're just lying sacks of shit. So the only thing they got left to do is attack me even more. The only thing they got left to do is hang on to that Lloyd at number four. <laughs> it's falling apart on you. When people look at the pictures, I don't need to say anything else. I'm going to say the one on the left is the one the media showed you. The one on the right is the one they didn't. That's all you got to do to say to anybody. Take a screen capture. And just talk with your friends. Say, well, here's the official pictures. <laughs> Let's keep going. <coughs> I'll never get through all the shit I got here for today anyway. <laughs> okay, here's the official pictures. I can't tell the difference. Everything looks pretty normal to me. Why do they got that big cement truck pumping water in there for? I wonder if they need a million gallons a minute. That ain't going to pump a million gallons a minute. Everything melted, caught fire, blew up, caught fire, melted down, caught fire, blew up, caught fire, blew up. Got shook to shit for the last four and a half years in earthquake, earthquake tremor after tremor after tremor after tremor. Paper, TEPCO needs to check if they got any brains. To check if radiation doses are spreading elsewhere. Two more spots of 10 sievers per hour, but no plans to actually take measurements. <laughs> <laughs> Ten sievers an hour, five sievers will kill you. You're dead. Ten sievers going to melt your organs right in your body when you're going past it. That's why they only send in the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society and the immigrants who don't speak the language. That's why you don't see Harvard and Yale and Stanford and Oxford and MIT or Woods Hole or Uvic down there. You won't see them at Fukushima. They go to Japan, but they won't go to Fukushima. They won't even leave Tokyo. They tell you they went out there on a boat in front of it, but we can't believe them. You can't believe anything else they said, so why would we believe that? What we face is a great unknown to all of mankind. Ten sievers an hour outside. The levels must be much higher, closer to the reactor core. Closer to the reactor core. It was over a million sievers. Five will kill you. It was over a million outside the reactor, too. And they use remote-controlled bulldozers to plow it under the soil. 
They didn't put pick it up and put it in the sarcophagus because there's no such thing. It's a big lie, a big fable, a big way to suck trillions of dollars into you. Everything about this industry is one great big shitstorm lie. Another headline. We only got three more there. Japan nuclear agency finally admits fuel is melted. 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 April the 20th. But Jovic was up on CBC saying in November 2013 there was no melted reactors. Right? To protect the uranium interests. You know, that's why the Globe and Mail come out and demonize me. Because if you look at their paper and put in Fukushima, all you see is uranium stocks. These are the evils. These are evil people. These are people with no conscience, no moral compass whatsoever. Zero. Zilch. I'm not the bad person. All parts of the fuel rods appear to melt in all three reactors. Huge problem. It's a fucking nightmare. Huge problem, Dana. Huge problem. Huge problem. They use graphite fuel in Chernobyl, which is jack compared to MOX fuel. MOX fuel is where they took 2 million. It's 2 million times worse than any other reactor currently on the planet. Currently on the planet. 2 million times worse. They took missiles from silos. Right? They reclaim the uranium and plutonium, put it through a chain reaction again to make wicked, deadly, maniacal directed energy weapon isotopes. So they can have their lasers that can shoot a million miles into space. The whole future is based upon lasers. The only way to have that kind of power source to, to have that kind of energy is with nuclear isotopes. And then if there's an accident, your country is contaminated and they can kill us all now with lasers. So there's 500 reasons to get rid of this technology. These are only a couple of them. Besides the fact it just killed the Pacific Ocean. It's dead. More of that later coming up. Here's the last headline of that string. More serious than a meltdown. Japan government now raising possibility that fuel had a melt through at all three reactors. A melt through. June the 7th, 2011. June the 7th, 2011. The accident happened March 11th. March, April, May, June. Melt throughs at all the reactors. And so that's why they rolled out and showed you that picture. Right? That's why they come out and show you this picture. Oh, no, no. Here, look at that. That, that, that. It's fine. Meanwhile, they tore everything off the building. Those two buildings don't touch each other at all. They done this with cranes. There's no one there with cutting torches and scaffold and 916 inch wrenches, pinning everything together. It's all dropped in by crane and the hooks together. But inside of that structure is not that. Inside of that the structure is not that, even though this is all the official picture. Inside of that structure, it will look like that, what you see right now, till the end of time. No one will get inside of that. This is this is after the accident. Look at it. Now, 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 ratify and justify how that can fit into that. Tell me again how this somehow magically works inside of that. Am I missing something? Is there something here I don't see? Looking back at the whole building. Look at the whole building. Look at it. It's right there. But they showed you that. And both of these are the official pictures, but they showed you that. Right? But yet it looks like that. They tore everything off the top of it. You know why? Because it looked like that. And so if they were going to put a crane in that piece they built there, why would they bother when it looked like that? If it looked like that, why would they tear it apart and make it look like that? Because it actually looked like that. I know. It doesn't get any more confusing or net, I bet you. It looks like that because it went kapoey. 
It looks like that because it blew up. All of them blew up. They blew up, they blew up, they blew up. What part about blowing up is it people can't wrap their mind around? Reactor 1 had one explosion, two fires. Reactor 1 had many explosions and many fires. But at least they allude to it. That's Unit 3. That's Unit 3 and 4. Right alongside of each other. No, it's okay, Dana. They went in there and fixed it, Dana. They won't even tell you that. Because they know they can't, they can't. Like, here's the fuel pool after the fire, after the detonation. But yeah, here's what the media told you. Looks like that on the inside. Yeah? <laughs> no, it looks like that, Dana. It looks like that, inside of that. But it actually looks like that, looks like that. But we're going to tell you it looks like that. We're going to tell you it looks like that. We're going to tear it all off. Right? They tore off the whole building. Right? They put a structure alongside of it with cranes and built it up. And then a couple months later, now it looks like that. Look at the roof. Look at the walls. Look at the ceiling. Look at the floor. Look at the people. Look at a real building. At what point are you going to make a stand? They tore all of that off. That's allegedly the basement of number four. You can see people up there. Only one of those could be a person. We zoomed in on it. And not only that, if that is a person, they're dead. They didn't live more than a couple of hours or a week, maybe at best. They're dead. Anybody goes in that, that's why they don't go in there. That's why they don't go into Chernobyl. That's why all these people died at Chernobyl. That's why 600 helicopter die, pilots died just flying over. All the buildings are close together. If you just had one meltdown, the rest of them are, are uh, destroyed by proxy. The fact that the tsunami ran through there, ran through hundreds of miles of the coastline. But here's the alleged pictures of the fuel pool. That's allegedly what it looked like after the accident. But here's what they show you. And they say we got to build a structure. Right? we got to build a structure because it looks like that on the inside. Am I missing something? We know it looks like that. We know they are the official pictures. And so what does official picture mean when it comes to TEPCO, I wonder? Okay. Let's keep going. Just give me a second. Hold tight, everybody. So unless you're... Whew, okay, let's keep going in that case. So, let me tell you... Let's come over and say hi to everybody for a second. Got no idea how this is going to work. <laughs> hi, Bob. Strain. Morgan. David. Devine. K. Amthurst. Chuck. Mickey. Ice cream. And we know Candace is out there, Amthurs is out there, Elaine is out there. And I was just trying to come in and say hi. I wasn't going to read comments or nothing, but. Uh, bacon soda is really good for cancer. Elaine has got some stuff there. Hi, Terry Ann. There's another one. I didn't say hi to that time. Let's keep going. When the last man, woman dies, there will be no one to say post -apop apocalypse. No, indeed. Yunk. Okay. So, what makes us different? Besides showing you all those pictures, <coughs> besides telling you the trope, not about the trope, the whole trope is that we can find it and verify it and vet it and source it and find other stuff to mirror with it. That's all we do. Because this is a real issue that's not going away. They might be trying to bury it four and a half, almost five years later. It's not going away. Because carbon-free nuclear just killed the Pacific Ocean. And so I'll explain that to you in a couple of simple steps of what we done also. <coughs> Sea urchins could be the next victims of sea star wasting disease. 
Let me try to fix this up a little bit first, uh, uh, Dana. And I don't know how good any of that's going to show up. And that's not what I wanted. Yeah, sorry, folks. Hang on. I kind of get it sometimes. I got to do this the hard way. Let's do this the hard way. Urchins could be the next victims of sea star wasting disease. The virus has struck the South or the Pacific sea star population. Now, they got this from, um, this was the Smithsonian, got it from National Geographic's. That was National Geographic's headline. But anyway, National Geographic's reports, so far urchins die off observed and documented at four sites along 200 miles of America coastline and then a fifth site off California. Okay, but they declared a mass mortality for the sea urchins because four sites. So what we done was we took a crowdfunded operation and this Zodiac and all equipment and we covered 260 miles, um, 260 days of the coastline, 15,000 plus miles. And the arrows you see are just a representation of the areas that we spend extended times in. And what we done, we took a couple of hundred thousand pictures, oodles of underwater footage, and oodles of documentation of the coastline. And you can find just endless amount of documentation at the nuclear proctologist.org. Uh, and that's not what we're looking for, Dana. Just go clickety clickety. So the nuclear proctologist.org, you can find uh, the documentation of the coastline. Okay. So we ran out with this operation. We've done up to five months without coming ashore. I'm an ex-commercial diver. I've worked at every industry in boat oceans. Uh, I got 14,000 hours underwater from the Atlantic and the Pacific. I was a skipper over a commercial, commercial dive vessels. Uh, when the fishery ended on the East Coast, I had 30,000 hooks, 120 gill nets, 30,000 hooks. And I spent my whole life working in the ocean or under the ocean. And that I probably have accumulation of around 18,000 hours total underwater, which is 18,000 hours more than Uvic and Woods Hole has. So I come at it from an extremely unique position. Now we went out and done the whole coastline in that boat, right? Look at the arrows. And now I know from my whole life on the ocean that it looks like that everywhere I go. You can look it up yourself. That's how it looked like pre-Fukushima. And that as you come ashore in just a square foot or two, it looks like that. Every millimeter is jostling for life. 5,600 species. Now there's another 4 million species in the ocean, but obviously there's no room there. So the 5,600 took up that room. Now there's nothing left. These are from the same place. Louise Narrows and the Queen Charlotte's. That's an iconic picture right there that I took. But there's nothing left on that shoreline. That's in the top left of the arrows, the red arrows. The green arrows, starting from the top coming down Vancouver Island, they're the pictures that are left to be uploaded. Now the top one, two, three, four, five arrows, I have those pictures up, and soon we'll start uploading the rest of the green arrows. But everything else, the reds are all up. Or at least large chunks of each section is up. I'm not going to say they're all up there because they're not. No, we're near it. But huge massive amounts, thousands and thousands for each individual area is already up at the nuclearproctologist.org. And so the whole coastline symmetrically is stripped. That's, that's uh, indisputable anymore. And we know the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, and the United States is kept warm by the warm waters directly from Japan, Kuroshio currents. Okay, let's keep going. Because I know time is, we got jack time left. Canada modeled out evidence of sharp features, right? Canada ran along the country. They took samples every 15 minutes and they showed a plume, but never told school children. They never told the Canadians. They hid it away from us. We paid them to get that plane, to have that education, to have that authority, to have that monetary, to go look for it. And when they found it, they hid it away on us. So the nuclear industry is has corrupted every aspect of our government, our institutions, our universities, our academics, our literature, our medias, 
or hospitals or cancer victims. Here's Francis modeling, showing the plumes. This is only based up on a single release. Here's Noah's model. I'm going to jump ahead because we haven't got no time left. Here's Noah's models of the radioactive father coming over from Japan. Right? This is over 40 days, and it stops at 40 days. Do you think the, the radiation stopped after 40 days? Do you think, oh, well, there you go, Dan. After 40 days, everything was fine. Because you got a lot to learn uh, if you think that way. And you probably shouldn't be on these streams because you, you don't sound very mature. Fire balloons was a weapon launched during Japan's World War II, about 12 uh, kilograms. And they found that stuff where? Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Idaho, Montana, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Michigan, Iowa, Mexico, and good old Canada. Woo! Thank goodness we never got left out of that one. We would have felt pretty shitty. Here's another model showing the radioactive dispersals just from a single reactor for a couple of days. None of these models shows the constant endless or all the other reactors that melted down. Here's another model of the radioactive. Just a couple of elements. They don't include the 2,000 elements. Takes three days to get to North America. Fukushima had a 9.0 earthquake. 9.0 earthquake. Tsunami, like I showed you earlier, detonations, meltdowns, meltdowns. This is unit one, this is unit two, this is unit three, this is unit four. That's four 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. They come out and showed you that, told you it was like that on the inside. They showed you that and told you it was like that on the inside. They showed you that and they don't show you that no more. In fact, I don't think they've ever shown you that picture. Here's the meltdowns from the flare, from the heat signatures. Now, when you can't get power to a nuclear plant, it melts down after about 90 minutes. Hundreds of miles of the coastline looked at, so many of the plants melted down. It wasn't just Fukushima. The radioactive fallout was throughout the country because they're cleaning it up throughout the country. That's evidence in the documentation of the pictures throughout the country. Fukushima Prefecture have over 10,000, 10,000 of these little spots. We know it goes directly into the Pacific Ocean, like the pictures I showed you earlier. The nuclear reactors are directly on the ocean. We know this model is based upon a couple of days' releases of just a couple of isotopes over six years. We know this model is nothing near reality. We know it's got nothing to do with all the reactors. It's only unit one or unit two for a couple of days. And that if you include all the releases, all the ongoing releases, all the water, the perpetually pouring in on it, all the rain, all the incinerators, all the illegal dumping into the rivers, the estuary, lakes in Japan, etc., 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 over four and a half years, you wouldn't see the ocean, period. It'd be that horrendous. Okay, let's keep running. We ain't got much time left. We're going to run out any... We only got uh, five or six minutes left. I just got a couple more things I want to cover here. Uh, and I'm probably not going to find it. Hang on. I'll give you that to squirrely over where I'm looking. Won't take me long. I guess I didn't import it. Damn it. I got too much on my computer is the problem. Okay. Let me keep... Hang on a second. We'll get there. Dr. Raymond Gilmede. And I'm going to have to make his picture a lot bigger. Dr. Raymond Gilmede from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute. I'm going to move him over this side because when I open up the pictures, they got a tendency to stretch across that screen. He killed beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 40, 35 years at Loveless Respiratory Research Institute. So this is um, curium in dogs. And curium isotopes are a major byproduct in radiated nuclear fuel rods and comprises a significant fraction of the alpha-emitting radionuclides inventory. Although little use in 1989 is currently being made of purified curium, which is a fissionable product itself. It's like plutonium uranium. Um, such uh, usage is possible if reprocessing of spent fuel pool uh, fuel becomes feasible. And so that's what they were doing in Japan. 
But Dr. Raymond Gilmette, he done studies on dogs and he showed the same thing with beagles as the plutonium effects. 144 beagle dogs, the dogs inhaled one of two sizes, one of two sizes. Think about that, one of two sizes. And the results were, um, results were this one here. Tumors of the lung, skeleton, and liver occurred beginning about three years after exposure. Bone tumors were found in 93 dogs were the most common cause of death. 93 of the 144. Liver tumors found in 20 dogs. <coughs> they all died. Tumors in these three organs often occurred in the same animals. 144 beagle dogs. <coughs> I'm losing my uh, vocal here. And so, how can anybody say, right, how can anybody say that it's, it's harmless and innocuous and benign when we covered the whole coastline and showed an extinction event? Right? And so that's why I was arrested. That's why I was tried, they tried to humiliate me, ridicule me uh, throughout the media in North America by claiming that I was charged with death threats when I'm charged with criminal harassment and nuclear pukes. That's all I'm charged with. I'm charged with nuclear apologists that I will be found guilty of murdering millions of children and women and, and kids and people in the future because they told all those lies and people believed them. Because the media put them out there, they'll be just as guilty too. And because we have to do that, we have to hold these people accountable. The people that didn't, the media didn't encounter them, well, you know, they should get life in prison minimum. And that's what we will advocate for in the future forever we will look for to deal with these people why the death of the Pacific Ocean now is playing out in front of our eyes and that all the whales and mammals and animals and birds and the migratory uh, have vanished and they vanished because the, the the basis of the food chain has vanished the phytoplankton is gone the krill is gone the anchovy sardine squid the herring the salmon the mackerel yeah, all gone. It's gone. And so we'll come in and we'll say good night to everybody. Good day to everybody. 1127. We made it right straight through the stream. Good stuff. Um, and I can probably do it a bit better than that, I'm sure. Hang on a second. Doesn't need to look that wretched. Needs to look there, wretches. That don't help me, Dana. Might as well go back to what you were doing. Make more sense. I'll play that in the background. I'll turn it down a little tiny bit as we say goodnight to everybody. I think that was the song I'm done yesterday. Now, I created that song originally probably 20 years ago. But it's just a eight-bar blues. But I, you know, I just, I, I, I fiddle with it. And I know there's a number of songs out there that uses 8-bar blues. There's endless amounts of them out there. But that one I came up with on my own 20-odd years ago. Uh, if, oh, I thought it was playing. Sorry. So we'll come over and we'll say hi to everybody at the same time. I'll get rid of my moniker there. Hi to Kate. Thank you, honey. And... Smurfed it up. Let me move it over a little tiny bit. Yeah, we had a good stream today. I slept almost all day yesterday, all last night. The the lawyers that were supposed to call me yesterday didn't call back, so I got I got to get on the phone today and start calling up more lawyers. So I can't remember now. I lost track of how many lawyers said no. Any lawyer could win this case. Any lawyer could fight this case. It's a simple case. So why is everybody? Why am I ostracized from the the law society for? I even called up the Bar Association and the lawyers that gave me said no. You can't wrap your mind. Oh, I can't wrap my mind around that. Hi, Tyrion. Illusion is over. Nova. Night, everybody. See everybody tomorrow. Thank you, Divine. Ice cream for you. Chuck. Shani again. Thank you for sure, everybody. I'm Thirst. Tyrion. Kate. Hugs, everybody. And Kate's got the Fukushima Hounds. You'll find a link at my YouTube videos. I'll start importing that stuff here if I ever remembers to do it. 
Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Strain. Thanks, everybody. I'm Thirst. Everybody I miss. Candice will be boy later, we know. She's off today. Strontium Mike. And to all the people out there that are fighting with everything they got for a real debate, a real discussion. And a w Duke, Adam, yar. Thanks, everybody. I'll come back over to Dana as we say goodnight. And so the stream played out. We'll say goodnight, everybody. The music's gone. I'm gone, too. Hugs for everybody. I'll be busy all day. But don't let that stop you if you have to contact me. My phone number is 604-223-223-107. I'm sorry, 0763. Try that again. 604-223-0763. You know, and I answer my phone every time. If I hear it, I'll answer it. And I'll find time to say hi to you if, if you need to ask a question. I'm available. And I always will be that way. That'll never change. I'm here for you. I, I exist because of you. I'm just a manifestation of you. And you will understand that someday, I'm sure. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.